In the previous video in this series, we learned how to use migrations to set up the tables in our application's database. Now, building on that, we want to see how we can interact with those tables, how we can create data, read data, update, and delete data. Now, there's a couple different ways we can interact with our database tables in Laravel, uh, but I'm going to be focusing on the most popular approach, which is using their Eloquent ORM system. ORM is short for Object Relational Mapping, and the idea is we're going to create these classes from which we'll create objects that are designed to communicate with specific tables. For example, within our example application, we have a products table. So we're going to create a corresponding product class that's going to give us all the utility we need to interact with that products table. And likewise, we'll do the same thing for our categories table. We'll have a corresponding category class to interact with that table. Now, these classes I'm talking about that are designed to interact with specific tables in our databases, we refer to these classes as models. And to jump right into this, let's start creating some of these models I'm talking about. So I'm going to switch over to command line first. I'm currently within my demo application. And once again, we're going to call upon PHP Artisan, and we'll follow that with make model. And we're going to start with a product model. And we'll go ahead and run that, and we get confirmation that that was created. And then let's do the same thing for our categories table. We're going to create a category model. And with those two files created, let's go over to our code base. And where we're going to find them is in app models. So there's our product model and our category model. And just like our controllers, we can see that this uh, class file is set up to inherit some classes within the core of the Laravel framework. And that's what's going to give it all of the abilities we're going to need within our models to uh, interact with our database tables. Before we do any interactions, though, there is a little bit of customization we want to add. Uh, and the first bit of customization is to make these models aware of their relationship to one another. Because as you'll recall, when we set up these tables, we did create a foreign key of relationship between products and categories such that every product is associated with a category. And then the inverse of that is that our categories are associated with many products. So to make our models aware of that relationship, I'm going to add a special relationship method. And I'll go ahead and type that out. And then let's break this down. So here is the method. It's called products. And it's going to return this data type of has many. Uh, this is one of the multiple relationship types that is available within the Eloquent system. And it's the one we want to use here because, as we know, each category has the potential to be associated with many different products. So all I have to do within this relationship method is just return an instance of this has many invocation. And I have to tell it what is the corresponding model that we are associating with the categories. And in this case, that's just going to reference our product model. And then finally, because we are using this special eloquent has many class, I did add a use statement at top to make sure that it was uh, accessible within this class itself. Now, building on this, we want to do a very similar thing within our product model. We want to tell it about its relationship to categories. So once again, I'm going to add a relationship method here. So as you can see this time, the relationship type we're using is called belongs to because each product can belong to a single category. And with that, our relationship methods are set up. And it might not be apparent right now why we had to add that code, but it will in a moment when we start actually using these models. We're going to see how we're going to harness these relationship methods when it comes to querying and working with our database. And let's actually get into that. Let's uh, see how we could start to put these models to use. Uh, where I'm going to put them to use is within Laravel's seeding feature. Uh, this allows us to fill our databases and our tables with sample data we can use during testing and development. Uh, where we're going to get into seeding, we want to go into our database directory under seeders. And then there's this main class called database seeder. And within this class is a single method called run. And whatever code we put in here will be executed when we invoke our seeding system. So the very first thing I'm going to do in here is I'm going to create a new instance of my category model so I can start to add some categories to my database. So let's say new category and we'll create a new instance of our category model. Uh, we do need to make sure it's accessible within this file. So I'll add a use statement up top. And then down here, we'll put it to use. And we're going to reference it. And via dynamic properties, we can reference the different field names in this table. So for example, within our categories table, we had the name field. 
and we could set that to be a value. So we'll start off with health as our first category. All right, so that sets up essentially a new row to be added to this categories table. Now to persist it, we're once again gonna reference that category object, but we're gonna invoke a save method on that. Now to follow this up, I wanna dump some output that's gonna show me all the categories that exist in my categories table, just to confirm that this did actually work, that a new category was added. Uh, and the code to do that's gonna look like this. All right, so I've got a dump statement just to quickly output some content. Uh, I am referencing my category model again, but this time rather than creating a new instance of it, I'm just accessing it statically uh, because I'm not persisting data here, I'm just retrieving data. So this is a common approach you'll see. Uh, I follow that up with a model method called all. This is gonna run a very general query in this table. It's just gonna get me all the rows in the table. And then I followed that up with a invocation of this method called to array. And that's just gonna take all the data and convert it to a nice array. Uh, without the array, we're gonna actually get a data type back called a collection, which is gonna have all of our data as well as a bunch of meta information about our data that we don't really need. So the purpose of the two array is really just to streamline and show us just the data from the row in the table. All right, well, let's run this. Let's see this in action. So I'm gonna switch over to command line. I'm gonna invoke PHP artisan and then to run my seeders, I'm gonna say db colon seed. All right, we get confirmation that our database was seeded and here's the output of that dump statement. So we got a array back with a single element and that makes sense because we only wrote code to add a single row so far and here's all the data of that row. So there's the name we specified, which was health. You can see the created at and updated at fields. This was not data that I specified, right? I didn't say new category created at and I didn't give it a timestamp because created at and updated at fields are automatically managed by Eloquent for us. It filled that data in and we can see that in our output. Similarly with ID, the ID field is a special field that's set to auto increment. So basically every new row we create, it's just gonna get a auto incrementing number. So the next row would be two and three and so on and so forth. And actually to see that, let me run this same command again. What it's gonna do is it's just gonna add another category with the name of health. Uh, and we should then end up with two rows in this table. And there you go, we've got our two rows. They have their unique created at and updated at timestamps. And you could see the ID of the second row was set to two. So now that we have successfully added a category, let's also do the same thing for our products table. So coming back to our seeder, we're gonna follow the same pattern. We're gonna say new product. It's gonna be an instance of our product model class. We'll add a use statement so that that class is available. And then once again, we'll reference the different uh, fields within this table. Uh, this table also has a field called name. And thinking back to the sample data we were using earlier, I think one of our first products was Band-Aids. And then the other thing we need to specify for our product is the corresponding category. And here's where it starts to get interesting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna reference that category relationship method we had defined within our product model. All right, so remember here's the method, it's a belongs to relationship. And we're just gonna chain onto that a method called associate so we can indicate which category we wanna associate with this product. And here we'll just reference that uh, category we created above because it is set to health and that is the category we want associated with Band-Aids. And then once again, to actually persist this new product to the database, we're gonna invoke that save method. And I'm gonna include a dump statement to dump out all of my products to confirm that it's added as expected. All right, so let's run this in command line. Uh, this time, rather than running DB seed, which would continue to give us some duplicate data, I'm gonna say PHP artisan migrate fresh. That's gonna clear my tables, uh, delete them and rebuild them from scratch. And then we're gonna follow that up with the seed flag. So after it gives me fresh tables, it'll run my database uh, seeders to fill them with data. So there's the output. We can see our tables were dropped, our migrations were run, and then our database was seeded. Here's the output of our categories table. And then here's our products table with our new Band-Aid product that was added. And you could see that the category ID for that product was one, which corresponds to the ID of our health category. So that was the result of this line here where we invoked that category relationship method and we associated it with our new category. So this is a good start to seeding our table. And of course we got some experience with working with our models to uh, persist new data as well as query for existing data. And of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Remember, this series is Laravel in a nutshell. So I just want to give you the essence of working within these tools. 
Uh, there's so much you can do with Eloquent when it comes to constructing your queries to do advanced filtering. Uh, there's a lot more advanced relationships you can get in with your data. But the basic idea, we have these models that correspond to our tables, and that's how we interact with our database. That's what I'm hoping to capture here. Um, now, to wrap up this example, I do want to flesh out our seeders a little bit so we have some more data to work with. Uh, and to expedite this, I'm going to go over to the notes that accompany this video. At the very end, I've got a, like a final example where I just pulled in that array of existing product and category data that uh, I had been working with in previous videos. And I just set up a for each loop to go through that and add each category and add each product. So let's just pull that in to round out this example. And I'll comment out my previous code and just add this after it. So just to skim through this quickly, here's our array of categories and product data. And then I've set up a for each loop to iterate through that data. So each iteration through, we're going to have access to a category name as well as products associated with that category. And the first thing we do is we persist that category to the database. And this is just using the same strategy we saw above when we were just hard coding that health category. We're doing that same thing here. And then we have a nested for each loop to then go through each of the products associated with that category. We persist that product to the database and then we associate the category that we just created with that product. Uh, and let me pull some of my dump statements uh, to the end of this just so we can make sure this is working as expected. So I'm gonna dump all of my products and I'm also gonna dump all of my categories before that. And let's go run that one last time. So we're gonna do another migration fresh followed by our seeds. And then we could just skim through our results, make sure everything looks as expected. So we've got all of our products and then above that are uh, three different categories we're working with. And I think that's a pretty good foundation for this application in terms of having some example data to work with. And like I said, it gave us some good practice with models along the way. Uh, now building on this in the next part of the series, uh, we're going to turn our attention to actual features in our application where we can see how we can do things like create a form where somebody could add a new product uh, and we'll of course take advantage of our models to persist that data to the database.